do, I can start, or if you've got some burning questions about what we talked about earlier, or anything to do with arterial disease, I'm happy to try and answer. If not, we'll carry on and show you a couple of gadgets. Um, you saw the laser going up the vein, and I brought you a laser catheter to show. It hasn't been used, don't worry, it's a demonstration one. But it just gives you a feel for how long it is, and how um, flexible or non-flexible it is. You can tie it up in knots as well. <laughs> Does that all by itself? Oh. Because I know that if you bend it, it breaks inside. Yeah. Well, because it, it's got to have total internal reflection for the laser light to, to go through. Um, so it will have reflective surfaces inside, but I don't know if it's glass. Um, but I'll pass this round. So this is the active end. It's got a little um, plasticky glass end. And this is the end that would connect onto the laser generator, and the light would be passing from there right up to the tip. Um, so, so that's like a fiber optic. I was going to yeah. say. I'll pass that down. Like Please feel free to wiggle it about, and um, <coughs> but don't kink it, otherwise, <laughs> as Sarah says, it will break. Um, really complex. Yeah. So you can, you can get a feel for how the vein. It's a bit like a ballpoint refill, isn't it? That sort of size, but not as flexible. Uh, a bit more flexible, but it won't go around a very tight hairpin bend. What does it actually do to the vein? I mean, it, does it not closes the vein off. So that the reason why you got varicose vein was because blood was flowing back yes, down, yeah, yeah. and because those valves can't be repaired effectively, um, you either have to remove the vein or render the vein as if it weren't there. So you're destroying the vein. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do you not need the vein? Um, there are plenty of other veins in the leg that do that job, and in fact. There are some operations in which we take the vein out to reuse it um, for some other purpose. Um, so that tells you it, it, it isn't absolutely necessary. It's another argument for the presence of God, really, isn't it? That he's put a spare bit of vein for us to use. <laughs> um, so while, while you're looking at the, um, the laser catheter, I'll show you one of these. Um, it comes packed in um, a sterile packaging like that. And um, it houses, it contains the, um, the stents that we, I showed you uh, in the aorta. This is one of the stainless steel ones. And um, the reason why it's quite long is because it's get, got to get from the groin up to here. Okay, so it's got to be long enough and slim enough to get through the artery and flexible enough to go around um, bends. So it does that. Now, um, I don't know how well this will work because you're supposed to have some saline to flush this through and make it, um, <coughs> excuse me, make it uh, reasonably lubricated. But does anyone volunteer to have a go to deploy a stent? Anyone want to have a go? <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> so, right. So, um, if I can persuade you to come up to a table, I'll have this one here. So, what I'd like to do then is to hold the, um, the gravy with your right hand. And as you as you keep that still and pull back with your left hand, what you'll do is you pull this pull sheet back. That's the sheet. And as you pull it back, you'll see what happens. So it's nice and gentle. I'll, I'll hold that. Could you? I can ask you to hold that steady, please. Just hold, the hold the tip. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Just hold it still. That's it. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. So that's the step one. And keep going. Keep going. And stop there. Okay. So now what you've what you've done there is you. Let go of the short leg of the pair of trousers. I'll hold it up for you, sorry. So that's the short leg of the trousers that's come out. And that's the long leg still there. You haven't, haven't finished yet. Have you? <laughs> so what you've got to do now is carry on, just as you were doing before. So that's the long leg deployed now. So I'll hold that there. So if you see, so the short leg's out, and the long leg is out too. And that's, that's the size that it would come out to. Now the next thing you've got to do is release the top end, because at the moment that's still held onto this. And if you just pull that out again, it will just pull it out of the body. So you want to leave that behind in the body. So it has a special clever um, release mechanism. So if you can undo that um, thing there, and on the end of that is a wire. So if you pull that out, the wire should come out with it. Oh, sorry, not that bit. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, oh, patient died. <laughs> that's why you have glasses. Yeah. What did you say you did? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I meant this one. Okay. That's the one. Is that where the saline goes in? Yeah, no, it goes in through that. Let's get back in. Don't worry, just leave that. So you pull that out. Do you want to have a go? Pull that out. Oh, 
Push C. Pull that right out. We should release that. Okay. And then what we do, we only do that. Push that up. Oh, and that's the. Uh, Ouch. <laughs> that reminds me it's got hooks on it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that would uh, sit inside the aorta and it, it's sort of constrained in that fashion. And it's pushing out against the side walls of the aorta and it's got little hooks on. So if you tried to pull it down, it would, it would be like, as you say, that finger was holding on. Um, so it won't come back down again. So that bit's released now, the top end. Um, but you need to release this. So um, you've already taken out the, the, the little button, but if you can pull that out as well. That's good. And the language's got to let go, I guess. Yeah, you will have to let go in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you'll put your pen there, so that's out there. And then we just need to um, push that back up to there. So that's good. We can engage it, so that's going to stay still. We can plan that staying still. <laughs> can we push that down? So you give all that. We'll do it that easy. Yeah. Right. Now, could you ask you to hold the stent in place like that? And we're going to withdraw that, and that leaves it inside the, inside the aorta doing its job. Now, we haven't quite finished because we need to put an extra limb in there, um, which we could do, I suppose. We've got one. Could we do? Okay. It may not be the right size, but we've got one. Can you give us some idea of a uh, diameter then of the aorta? Yes, yeah, so a normal aorta in someone like you would be between 15 and 20 millimetres. So an aortic aneurysm um, would be somewhere over 3 centimetres in diameter. But we don't treat it to this size of 5 and a half. So these are about um, 5 to 6,000 pounds. A great expense tonight. <laughs> so who, any, who wants to do this bit? Anybody want to go? No? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I've got to prepare this thing. Because it's so much easier when it's not in the body. <laughs> <laughs> You've obviously done it in the body. <laughs> you know, like a ship in a bottle, like Grandpa used to do. It always reminds me of that. Are you okay so, to hold that? Yes, so, yeah. yeah. So, Threading out wires. And, and this normally goes over. A wire goes through this, which we've put into the board already, just for easy and easy. So that would be negotiated into there. And what we don't have, of course, is x rays to show us we're in the right position. The x rays would tell us how far up to put it or how far that, but so, um, so you've got to hold the gravy still and pull back on the, on that, the blue bit and we'll see when the stent comes out. Oh, right, sure. yeah. yeah, that's it, brilliant. Well, you've so done that, one, so you know. Yeah. Yeah. So now you can see how the, the new the leg is extending the stem that we've put in already. Oh, it's like the new shorts. It's perfect. There we go. We would have had to put another one in there as well. So now you're done there. Now you just have to release the... Release that bit. It's not attached to anything. It is, isn't it? Yeah. There we are, that's the auto repaired in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Perfect. So that, that's, that's what a deployed stem would look like. There'll be another bit down here as well. Uh, we won't, won't uh, spend time doing that. So I'll pass that around. Just be aware of the, the hooks on there, okay? Really dangerous. What are we doing for Well, Nathan kindly put this in the bin. Um, where's Nathan gone? Yeah. Okay. 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 You want the small table? It's 
That's going to go into the bin, actually. Yeah. You drop one more thing out there. Thank you. That's a bit of a bit. Don't know, I know how big my field is. That's right, so now you're going to have a step. So while it's been passed around, is um, there anything anyone wants to ask? How many days do you do a year? <laughs> six an hour, isn't it? Okay, sorry, see if you know. Um, um, how many how many together, Yeah. Together, yeah. Together. Okay, so that's that's including So one and a bit a week. Would that be alright? One and a bit a week. You have a lot of um, time off during the week. Yeah. <laughs> One and a bit of those a week, and then there are the open aneurysms which, which we showed you earlier, so those as well, of which we've, yeah, we've done quite a few in the last week. And then there are varicose vein operations and bypass operations and carotid operations and clinics, clinics and, um, <coughs> yeah. And you've got to see the patients in between. Oh, so. yes. <laughs> the, the, the parachute silk, yes, job, does, yes. does that go around the outside? Yes. So it, shuts, it just stops it expanding? Um, no, no, sorry, um, do you mean the repair of the open, when yes. we cut open? Um, the aneurysm is opened up and the parachute sort of re inside. replaces the artery. That's, that was there before. Yeah. You, can't, you can't just you can't bang because it to the, stop uh, the swelling. No, well, that, funny enough, I didn't go into it, but an, a, uh, Einstein had a ruptured aneurysm. And um, before that, he was known to have an aneurysm, and the treatment at that point was to wrap it up in a sterile cellophane to induce a fibrous reaction which makes it tougher and stops it expanding. It didn't work, it continued to expand, and he was offered this treatment by Arthur Bohees, but he declined it, and then it ruptured. Um, I think he was, I can't remember how old he was when he died. Some six, thank you. You talked about the gel um, somewhere. Glue for various things? No, you no. talked about gel around the um, stent. Did you? Some sort of gel? Oh, to harden it with the, and the, the weave, you were saying. Oh, you sorry, if it, in, the, in the knitted one, you yeah. can use um, gelatin or. You can use gelatin or. Albumin? Albumin, no. What's the pattern? It slipped my mind. Too much of that nice prospect. <laughs> <laughs> gelatin. Yeah, it's type stuff so, to fill in the holes. Does that um, disperse as well? No, no, it stays. It's, it's bonded, so it stays. Um, it, it won't. It, you've got to keep the holes plugged up. How do you um, seal on the top of the stem to stop the flood going down the outside? Yes, and that's very important. That the, the, the pressure of the stem pushing outwards against the wall of the aneurysm, uh, of the normal bit of water above the aneurysm, should form a nice seal. Occasionally it doesn't, and I didn't go into that because it can be quite complicated, but if the blood finds its way between the fabric covering the stent and the aorta, it can then sneak into the aneurysm and cause what's called an endo leak, and that can continue to expand the aneurysm, so you may have to put new stents in or sometimes operate um, open way. Now, Mr. Holford, who had the stent, and Mr. Simmons, who had the open operation, have said they're very happy to accept questions from you um, about their operations, if you want to ask them. Please take advantage of their experiences. <laughs> it's effective what you can do. You might go. Fair enough. Good. My first day operation, mm -hmm. second day sitting in a chair. Sitting in a chair, and I got told off by the nurse that I mustn't, <laughs> under no circumstances, do it. And I said, Well, I've got a painkiller in my back, I can't feel nothing. And I said, You've got to make, make use of it, you've got to get up and start moving, because the sooner you start moving, the sooner you're a little. Um, can we ask, if, if I may, how your aneurysms were detected? How did you find out you had one? Well, I had um, an x-ray on my hip, actually. Yeah. And the x-ray sort of passed by the hip and showed that the 
artery. In fact, the, the um, X-ray showed the artery, uh, the aneurysm was much larger than it was. Um, Overestimated the size. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was then referred to the GP on then then to on to ultrasound, and I kept having an ultrasound um, check every six months for the next four years. At which time they said, "Well, now you've got to have it done." So that's right. So if it was small enough to be detected, but not large enough to be operated on, have a scan every six to twelve months until it does become large enough. And um, before I forget, um, Sarah, who's um, over there, with the tells. Sarah's got some information leaflets. If anyone wanted to take one about varicose veins or aneurysms, so please do feel free to ask. Um, and how about yours, Mr. Simmons? Mine was done through um, Salisbury. Hospital sent me a leaflet. It's a basic checkup. What they send out, and uh, I would advise anybody that has one to take notice of it, but not just forget about it. Otherwise, yeah, I was going to say, on your death certificate, it'll be an hemorrhage. Is that the AAA? That's yeah. right, it's the yeah. aortic aneurysm screen, screening program, not yeah. screening program. I've just had a leaflet. Have you? Yeah. So this is a national program. Um, thank you. And it invites men um, over 65. Over 60. 60, 60 thank you. Um, um, to, to that, that prospect ale is quite good, isn't it? Um, <laughs> and um, to, to come along for a scan, a free scan. Um, and if you have an aneurysm detected, then you're automatically put into a process of surveillance. If you've had an aneurysm detected, which is over five and a half centimetres or thereabouts, then you get fast-tracked to have treatment. So it's well worthwhile. Um, at the moment, it's not available to women, but I, I think what we, don't, what, we know, what we know is that women don't do as well from aneurysm repairs than men, um, for reasons which are quite complicated. They're less common in men, women, we think, but they have about worst result when they're operated on. Did you know that there was something wrong before it was detected? No, no, no. I haven't no. Okay. no, I went in and had the check done, mm. and it was, I was told there and then that I had one. Yeah. And I had to go from uh, Kinson over to Amworthy uh -huh. on a bus. <laughs> so I got to the bus station and then walked from the bus station to Antworthy. And which, when I got there, the nurse turned around and said, Do you do much walking? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, joking aside, I, yeah, I do me walking. Yeah. But no, I didn't know that I had it. And it wasn't until we gradually got into it, my treatment was booked in. Then my blood pressure went up, it was cancelled, so I had to go on to blood pressure tablets to bring blood pressure down before I could have the operation. And on the 11th of April will be my six weeks checkup. So uh, you're not recent? doing too bad. Is that recent? That's a reason. Oh yeah. But you've got to be, <coughs> you've got to be determined yeah. and positive. Oh, yeah. And you volunteered, you volunteered to show your scar, didn't you, to anyone? Yeah, else? if anyone. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a long team. I'll show you the top. But it's. Um, How big was it? Whoa. It goes from the rib cage. I can't rib cage down to the pubic bone, basically. Yeah, you had quite extensive aneurysms, A or to I left aneurysms. But mine was a whopper. And, and what, what we didn't say was that um, there are some aneurysms for which you have to put the clamp above the level of the arteries to the kidney, mm. and yours was one of those. Um, and of course that deprives the kidneys of blood for some minutes, and um, uh, you have to hope that the kidneys will cope with Pick that, up. And, and yours cope very well. Yeah. Wow. That's it would have been very nice. difficult to treat that, not impossible, but difficult to treat his aneurysm with a stent you need little branches to go into the kidney arteries and so on. It's not impossible, yeah. but it's more complicated. Do, do, do you make stents for every junction? Um, that you can have tailor-made stents, yes, and sometimes you need that for specific kinds of aneurysms. But the one that I showed you, 
the, yeah, thank you, off, <laughs> off the shelf. Um, they're made of c different components, and each of those components is made in different sizes, so you can mix and match to make the right components for your particular energy. Yeah, there was 43, 43 clips, and not stitches, they're clips. And uh, when they take the stitches out, they take every other one out, just in case things start <laughs> opening up. <laughs> uh, yeah, they get down to the bottom and then they come back up to the top again, or well, they wash it off, come back up to the top, and pull them all out, you know, take them all out. And so how long was it from your operation that you started to feel as good as you did before the surgery? Well, all the while the painkiller was there, <laughs> like I said, you get up and you start moving. I was up walking down to the toilet once I found out that they wasn't measuring me urine and I thought there's no way am I peeing in that bottle <laughs> and that stuck underneath my nose all night long. <laughs> when I can walk down to the toilet, use the toilet, wash my hands and come back and go to sleep as a happy bunny. <laughs> and that's what I was doing. I was up in the morning, I used to go down for my shower. I used to have a shower before breakfast. Mm. But then, and then, of course, the physio come round and she said, well, I think we're going to have you up today and see whether you can do a little bit of a walk. <laughs> I said, where are we going? <laughs> and she said, well, we'll we just go round to reception. She said, that's just round the corner. She said, it's not too far. I said, oh, all right. <laughs> I you said, well, past that, have you? <laughs> I said, I went past that small now. <laughs> I said, no, I said, I'll go down to the end of the corridor. I said, and watch the builders. <laughs> you are rather special, but you, 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 um, <laughs> you illustrate the point that a lot of recovery from any operation is, is up here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your attitude. It is. It's your yeah. attitude. Yeah. Now, you had an open operation and you stayed in, what, seven days, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Holford, you had a stent and yeah. the average stay for that is something like two days. Yeah. Because it's not it. as big an operation. And that's the great advantage of the stent. Oh, yeah. Um, absolutely. It doesn't have the <coughs> big cut in the tummy. Um, it doesn't need to, you don't need to go to intensive care. Um, and so you might say, well, why doesn't everybody have a stent? And the reason is that in some cases it's more tricky, as in your case, Mr. Simmons. Um, but in other cases, the patient might be quite young, you know, 60s, for example, and the stent has got to last there. For on average, someone, a, ma a man in this part of the world lives to the age of 84, thereabouts. And so um, if you're going to operate on someone in their 60s, you want that to last 20 years or so. Um, and we're not convinced yet that the stents can do that. They need to be monitored quite closely over long periods in case they kink or leak or have endo leaks, as someone asked about. Now you're telling us. <laughs> that was all in your consent for me, sure. <laughs> but yeah, of course, on the day that I was evicted, <laughs> I got a taxi home. Got a taxi home and my taxi boy, he carried me case in for me, put it on the settee. He said, I've opened it up for you, sir. I said, thank you very much. So I paid him and away he went and that was it. Do you mean so you didn't carry your own case? <laughs> well, I've got a small case with wheels on, just in case. Because <laughs> it was either a taxi or the bus. But uh, no, it, like I say, it is determination. Mm. It is, absolutely. You've got to have the will to, uh, to get up and start moving. Yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions? Can I ask you to thank the two gentlemen? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much.